Hi everyone, this is Grace of GB Maltese. And as you can see, I am working on a diamond painting that I have been working on for a little while. I hope to finish it very soon. And I thought while I'm working on it, I, read, I would read you one or two stories. I have several that have been enjoying the stories. So I've picked out a couple. <coughs> And I think you're going to enjoy them. The first story is an old German tale. And the title of the story is The Six Swans. I hope you enjoy it. A king was once hunting in a great wood. And he hunted the game so eagerly that none of his courtiers were able to keep up with him. When evening came on, he saw that he had lost his way and was quite alone. He sought a way out of the forest, but he could not find one. Then he saw an old woman with a shaking head coming toward him. Good woman, he said to her, can you not show me the way out of the wood? Oh, certainly, Sir King, she replied. I can do that, but only on one condition. If you do not fulfill my request, you will never get out of the wood and will die of hunger. What is the condition? asked the king. I have a daughter, said the old woman, who is so beautiful that she has not her equal in the world, and she is well worthy of being your wife. If you will make her your queen, I will show you how to get out of the wood. The king, in his anguish of mind, consented. And the old woman, who, who was indeed a witch, led him to her little house where her daughter was sitting by the fire. She received the king as if she were expecting him, and he saw that she was certainly beautiful. But somehow the girl did not please the king, and he could not look at her, at her without a secret feeling of horror. As soon as he had lifted the maiden onto his horse, the old woman showed him the way. Soon the king reached his palace, and the wedding was celebrated there. Now the king had already been married once, and had by his first wife seven children, six boys and one girl, whom he loved more than anything in the world. But because he was afraid that their new stepmother might not treat them well, he put them all in a lonely castle that stood in the middle of a wood. It lay so hidden, and the way to it was so hard to find, that he himself could not have reached it, had not a wise woman given him a spool of thread which possessed a marvelous property. When he threw it before him, it unwound itself and showed him the way. But the king went so often to visit the dear children that the queen became annoyed with his absence. She grew more and more curious and decided to discover what he did alone in the wood. So she gave his servants a great deal of money and they betrayed his secret to her and so also told her of the spool of thread which alone could point out the way. She did not rest till she found out where the king guarded the spool. Then she made some little white shirts and, as she had learned from her witch mother, sewed an enchantment in each of them. And one day, 
When the king had ridden off, she took the little shirts and went into the wood, and the spool showed her the way. The boys, who saw someone in the distance, thought it was their dear father coming to see them, and they rushed out to meet him joyfully. Then she threw a white shirt over each one, which changed them all into swans, and they flew away over the forest. <laughs> the queen went home quite satisfied and thought she was well rid of her stepchildren. But of the king's daughter, she knew nothing, because fortunately the child had not run out of the castle to meet her. The next day the king went to visit his children, and he found no one but his daughters. Where are your brothers? he asked her. Alas, dear father, she answered, they have gone away and left me all alone. And she told him that looking out of her window, she had seen all of her brothers flying over the wood in the shape of swans. The king mourned for his sons, and since he was afraid of losing his daughter also, he decided to take her with him. But she was afraid of the stepmother and begged the king to let her stay just one night more in the castle in the wood. The poor girl thought, my home is no longer here. I will go and seek my brothers. And when night came, she went deep into the forest. She walked all through the night and the next day. She could go no farther for weariness. Then she saw a hut. She went in and found a room with six little beds. She crept under one of them, lay down on the hard floor, and was going to spend the night there. Just before sunset, she heard a rustling sound and saw six swans flying in the window. They stood on the floor and blew all their feathers off, and then they stripped off their swans' skin like shirts. Overjoyed as she recognized her brothers, the girl crept out from under the bed, and her brothers were no less delighted to see their little sister again. But their joy did not last very long. You cannot stay here, they said to her. This is a den of robbers. Could you not protect me? asked the sister. No, they answered. For just a quarter of an hour after sunset, do we regain our human forms? After that, we are changed into swans again. Then the little sister cried and said, Can you not be freed? Oh, no, they said. The conditions are too hard. You, our dear little sister, could not speak or laugh for six years. And in that time... You must make six shirts for us out of star flowers. If a single word comes out of your mouth, all your labor would be in vain, and we would remain under the spell. When the brothers had said this, the quarter of an hour came to an end, and they flew away through the window as swans. The maiden determined to free her brothers, even if it should cost her her life. She left the hut, went into the forest, climbed a tree, and spent the night there. The next morning she came down, collected star flowers, and returning to the tree, began to sew. She could speak to no one, and she had no wish to laugh, so she th sat there, looking only at her work. When she had lived there for some time, it happened that the king of another country was hunting in that forest, and his hunters came to the tree in which the maiden sat. They called out to her and asked, Who are you? But she gave no answer. Come to us, they called. We will do you no harm. 
she shook her head silently. As they pressed her further with questions, she threw them a gold chain from her neck. But they would not leave off. And she threw them her belt. And when this was no use, her garters and then her dress. The huntsman would still not leave her alone, but climbed the tree, lifted the maiden down, and led her to the king. The king asked, Why are you in that tree? But she answered nothing. He asked her in all the languages he knew, but she was as silent as a fish. Because she was so beautiful, however, the king's heart was touched and was overcome with a great love for her. He wrapped her up in his cloak, placed her before him on his horse, and brought her to his castle. There he had her dressed in rich clothes, but not a word could be drawn from her. He seated her by his side, and her modest ways and behavior pleased him so much that he said, I will marry this maiden and none other in the world. And after some days, he married her. Now the king had a wicked mother who was displeased with the marriage and said terrible things of the young queen. This girl is not worthy of a king, she said. After a year, when the queen had her first child, the old mother took it away from her. Then she told the king that the queen had killed their baby. The king could not believe it and would not allow any harm to be done to her. And his wife sat quietly, sewing at the shirts, apparently not troubling herself about anything. The next time she had a child, the wicked mother did the same thing. But the king would not believe her, he said. She is too sweet and good to do that. But when the third child was taken away and his wife was again accused and could not utter a word in, his, in her own behalf, the king was obliged to give her over to the law, which decreed that she be burned to death. When the day came on which the sentence was to be executed, it was the last day of the six years in which she could not speak or laugh. The six shirts were done except for the left sleeve of the last one. As she was being led to the stake, the queen laid the shirts on her arm and when she stood on the pile of sticks and the fire was about to be lighted, she looked around her and saw six swans flying through the air. Then she knew that her release was at hand and that she could free her dear brothers from enchantment. Her heart danced for joy. The swans fluttered around her and hovered so low that she could throw the shirts over them. The swan skins fell off and her brother stood before her living well and handsome. Only the youngest had a swan's wing instead of his left arm because his shirt, shirt sleeve had not been finished. They embraced and kissed each other and the queen went to the king who was standing by in great astonishment. Dearest husband, now I can speak and tell you that I am innocent, and I have been falsely accused. She told him of his old mother's deceit, and how she had taken the three children away and hidden them. Then the children were fetched, to the great joy of the king. But the wicked old woman came to no good end. And the king and the queen, their children and her brothers lived for many years in happiness and peace. <clears throat> I thought this was quite an interesting story. I did feel sorry for the youngest brother 
still having a wing for his left arm, but at least he's no longer a swan. And they are living all together as a family. I hope you enjoyed that one. The next story I have chosen is an old Russian tale. And I hope I pronounce these names correctly. The story is called Snogorka, the Snow Maiden. Once upon a time, a peasant named Ivan had a wife called Marusha. They had been married many years, but they had no children. This was a great sorrow to them. Their only pleasure was watching the children of their neighbors. One winter day, when fresh white snow lay deep everywhere, Ivan and his wife watched the children playing in it. Laughing loudly as they played, the children began to make a beautiful snowman, and Ivan and Marusha enjoyed seeing it grow. Suddenly, Ivan said, Boys, let us go out and make a snowman too. Marusha was ready. Why not, she said. We may as well amuse ourselves a little, but why should we make a big snowman? Let us make a snow child, since God has not given us a living one. You are right, said Ivan, and he led his wife outdoors. There in the garden by their house, they set to work to make a child of snow. They made a little body and little hands and little feet. When all that was done, they rolled a snowball and shaped it into a head. Heaven bless you, cried a passerby. Thank you, replied Ivan. The help of heaven is always good, said Marusha. What are you doing? asked the passerby. We are making a snow girl, said Marusha. On the ball of snow, which stood for a head, they put a nose and a chin, and they made two little holes for eyes. Just as they finished their work, oh, wonder of wonders, the little snow maiden moved. Ivan felt a warm breath come from her lips. He drew back and looked. The snow maiden's sparkling eyes were blue, and her lips, rosy now, curved in a lovely smile. What is this? cried Ivan, making the sign of the cross. The snow maiden bent her head, and the snow fell from now golden hair, which curled about her soft round cheeks. She moved her little arms and legs in the snow, as if she were a real child. Avon, Avon, Kai, cried Marusha. Heaven has heard our prayers. She threw herself on the child and covered her with kisses. Ah, Snigurka, my old dear snow maiden, she cried, and she carried her into the house. Ivan had much to do to recover from his surprise, and Marusha became foolish with joy. Hour by hour, Sigurka, the snow maiden, grew both in size and in beauty. Ivan and Marusha could not take their eyes away, away from her. The little house, which had held such sadness, now was full of life and merriment. The neighboring children came to play with the snow maiden. They chattered with her and sang songs to her, teaching her all they knew. The snow maiden was very clever. She observed everything and learned quickly. When she spoke, her voice was so sweet that one could have gone on listening to it forever. She was gentle, obedient, and loving. In turn, everyone loved her. She played in the snow with the other children, and they saw how well her little hands could model things of snow and ice. Marusha said, See what a joy heaven has given us after these many years. Heaven be thanked, replied Ivan. At last, the winter came to an end, 
and the spring sun shone down and warmed the earth. The snow melted, green grass sprang up in the fields, and the larks sang high in the sky. The village girls went about singing, Sweet spring, how did you come to us? How did you come? Did you come on a plow or on a harrow? Although the other children were gay with spring and full of song and dance, the snow maiden sat by the window looking sadder and sadder. Oh, what is the matter with you, my dear child? asked Marusha, drawing her close and caressing her. Are you not well? Why aren't you happy? It is nothing, mother, answered the snow maiden. I am quite well. The last snow of the winter had now melted and disappeared. Flowers bloomed in every field and garden. In the forest, the nightingale poured out its song, and all the world seemed glad, except the snow maiden, who became sadder still. She would run away from her friends and hide from the sun in dark corners, like a timid flower under the trees. She liked best to play by the water under shady willow trees. She was happiest at night, and during a storm, even a fierce hailstorm, hail when the hail melted and the sun broke forth again, she began to weep. Summer came with ripening fields, and the Feast of St. John was soon to be celebrated. The snow maiden's friends begged her to go with them to the forest to pick berries and flowers. The snow maiden did not want to go, but her mother urged her, even though she too felt afraid. Go, my darling, and play. And you, children, look after her well. You know how much I love her. In the forest, the children picked wild flowers and made themselves wreaths. It was warm, and they ran about singing, each wearing a crown of flowers. Look at us, they shouted. Come play with us, they urged the snow maiden. Follow us. They went on dancing and singing. Then all of a sudden, they heard behind them a sigh. They turned and looked. There was nothing to be seen but a fast melting little heap of snow. The snow maiden was no longer among them. They called and called and shouted her name, but there was no answer. Where can she be? She must have gone home, they said. Back they ran to the village, but no one there had seen her either. During the next day, and the day following, everyone searched. They went through the woods and looked through every thicket, but no trace of the little snow maiden was to be found. Ivan and Marusha felt that their hearts would break, and for a long time Marusha cried, Snagorka, my sweet snow maiden, come to me. Sometimes Ivan and Marusha thought they could hear the voice of their child. Perhaps when the snow returned, she would come back to them. I think she will. What about you guys? I really think their little snow maiden will return in the winter. What did you think about the two stories? Which one did you find to be your favorite? I, it's, it's always hard for me to choose. I love them both. Um, the first one had maybe a little bit happier ending, but I think the second one will have a happy ending when, snow, when the winter time returns. I think their snow maiden will return also. Anyway, I hope you're having a lovely day, night, evening, whatever it may be. Take care of yourselves. Be healthy. Stay well. I love you guys so much. God bless you always. Talk to you later. Love you guys. Bye.